All right, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, I'm Dale Sorsby with iTential. This is uh, Bill Coward, Cox Communications. And I'm Michael Levinchek with iTential. And um, a little echo. Uh, we're going to talk about event correlation and lifecycle management today. So, um, just to level set and get some. Uh, get some definitions. Uh, what is NFE in this presentation? So um, definition from Wikipedia, which we thought was good enough, um, is a network architecture concept and technologies for IT virtualization uh, to virtualize entire classes of network functions, building blocks that we connect and chain together for to create a communication service. And we wanted to put this up here because we're making a differentiation between NFV as a service versus a VNF, which is just an instance of a VM or microservice that might be running in your cloud, as opposed to the service, which would be a chain of these put together to provide a complete service from end to end. So we put together a basic network service architecture. So you may or may not have all of these when you deploy your cloud. But in an architecture, you may have um, a central distributed and possibly um, branch nodes where you have compute at different places. So you can see the green line, uh, which re represents a service going from the edge all the way in. And you may have uh, VNFs as part of your service running in any or all of these locations, uh, depending on what you have deployed. And around it, you have all of the supporting applications, your orchestrators, your VNF managers, your VIM, um, that are providing and helping you provision your service. So there's a lot of overlap when you're putting together your architecture. And we use the Etsy as, a fr Etsy as the framework for this, um, although you may be using Ecomp or whatever framework that you, um, you're going to base your, app or your architecture on. But you can see there's a lot of overlap. So as you've seen through the conference, there are many applications or many different ways you can instrument uh, your cloud, your management, your monitoring. And there's a lot of overlap, uh, particularly um, you can see in the VNFM and NFVO space. Although Etsy or your framework might define a particular, um, that a particular function be handled by the NFEO, for example, um, there may be other applications in your architecture that can actually do those same functions. So if you're not careful and if you don't define the swim lanes properly, you can end up with multiple applications in your architecture stepping on each other, essentially, thinking that well, this went down, I need to manage this, or I need to orchestrate that, and you get collisions. Oops. So what do we need to monitor? So um, uh, we've got the business as usual type information, like the servers and the network gear that provide your underlay. You have the cloud applications provisioning in the NFE inf infrastructure. Uh, this will be your OpenStack services, your orchestrators, and those sorts of things. Um, and you have the VNFs themselves, which are providing your services. You need to make sure that they're running and functioning properly um, across all the different locations that are providing your service. So what we're going to talk about later uh, for um, is based on, pardon me, is based on monitoring. So you want to have your service assurance infrastructure um, to make sure that you're grabbing all the information and getting it up into your service assurance systems, which um, are the collection, correlation, and visualization. So here we've got represented the underlay routers and switches. Um, you also need to monitor the servers, which are hosting your uh, applications, your VIM, your orchestrators, where your VNFs are actually running. And of course, you need to be able to get telemetry and alarms 
um, out of your orchestrator. So uh, when you have VNF spinning up, spinning down, moving around in your cloud, um, you want to know that these things are happening. And then finally, um, you've got to be able to pull all this together to understand that your service is running from an underlay and overlay perspective. So what we've tried to do in, um, in our experience is we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we want to use the built-in intelligence of these systems, um, the NFV orchestrators, for example. We want them to manage the VNFs. We want them to manage the services. Um, and we also want to use the strengths of those existing systems to do that. Um, and also you have, when you deploy your cloud, you're deploying it to support a service, something that you're selling, um, or something that's going to provide value to your organization. So it's going to be going into a brownfield sort of scenario. So it's got to work with um, existing systems, um, processes, um, and it's got to be supportable and operational within your organization. Um, one thing that we don't want to do is introduce a bunch of new um, portals or views to, say, network operators. Um, they have their existing systems and processes, so we don't want to give them 20 different new tools that they have to look at 20 different dashboards or, um, or uh, graphs to be able to manage the system, partly because they're not going to want to see that and they're not going to understand what it all means and be able to put it together. So you've got to be able to collect all the information, put it into a system, and be able to correlate and make sense of it um, so that uh, you can support the service. So the challenges that you've got are integrating to the external systems and making sure that just with traditional monitoring that you've actually instrumented and gathered everything. So you've got many options for applications that you might instrument and gather your events with. Um, you need to make sure that those alerts and notifications are complete. Uh, one of the things that we've seen, for example, if you're integrating with um, an orchestrator, they may tell you to connect to a service bus, which will give you a notification, but it may be a notification with simply an ID number, which doesn't tell you anything about whether this is a fault or just information or regular telemetry. Um, and you've got to actually query back into that system to understand even what it means, just to get a summary or severity or any kind of useful information. And in a high volume system, you can see where this can become a problem where you can get behind very quickly, where you're getting tens or hundreds of events per second and having to query back into those systems one or multiple times just to figure out what, what the heck the event means. Um, and of course, there's a new approach. You need to think of approaching and monitoring a cloud service partly differently than you would a physical service. So um, where you might care about a particular router or switch on your physical network, um, it may not matter as much in a cloud native application when you have VNF spinning up and spinning down. You don't want to treat them um, as you would with a physical service because you want to make sure the service is up, but maybe not necessarily how many specific instances are running um, at any one time. You want to know that those are happening and you don't want to know where they're moving and that your service is up. And to understand that, um, you have to have some correlation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now that Dale has the entire network and all our resources <laughs> monitored, censored, and made available, um, correlating all the events that we're receiving from the network, the cloud, um, systems, subsystems, and whatnot. And um, <clears throat> correlation is very important <clears throat> in, um, in the entire life cycle management ecosystem. And correlation helps us identify relationships between events. And, <clears throat> and also, it requires a holistic look of the service, the network, the underlays, not only in the cloud, but external resources in the cloud as well. And it also requires um, multiple data types, multiple protocols, multiple interfaces from, 
from, um, from devices that we're receiving the data from. And of course, a large enterprise service provider <clears throat> or a carrier, you're going to have a very, very, very large system. It could be thousands and thousands of, um, of, of, of elements, resource elements. <clears throat> Excuse me. And correlation is going to support us in, <clears throat> in, of course, identifying the relationships. And the relationships are usually topological or temporal, time-based, and um, also, of course, service-based. And with the data that we glean from the network, turns into information, and the information we can, of course, um, manage and manage and manage our our systems and our, our in our network better. And of course, this will turn into knowledge. And if we have knowledge, <laughs> we're on the cusp of a cloud whisper. Isn't that right, Dale? <laughs> but the challenges that we have right now with uh, the lack of standards and, and you know the community and the industry is working on these these challenges. But um, as Dale just mentioned. Sometimes you get a, an event from OpenStack and it just has a, a user ID or an ID. And that doesn't mean anything to our brownfield systems. That doesn't mean anything. And to, like Dale mentioned, query more information about this particular event, that's just, uh, that's just not scalable. And of course, um, possible scaling issues um, with uh, Salometer and RabbitMQ, uh, the queue sizes, and if you have a distributed architecture like we have, it can make it, um, it, can make it even more challenging. And of course, as I mentioned before, integration with, it's not all going to be SNMP. It's, uh, there's a labyrinth of protocols and data models out there for, um, for, event, uh, for event monitoring. <clears throat> we have this concept, I don't know, we kind of coined this term, <laughs> um, healing collisions where we have an instance of multiple systems, multiple devices uh, try to heal a VM or a VNF at the same time. And we have, there's going to be have to, um, a concept of a cross-domain orchestrator that has the awareness and can communicate the faults and possibly direct a specific entity to do the healing and not multiple multiple uh, entities trying to heal a single, a single event or a fault. The tools out there right now are pretty sparse. Um, um, there's a few out there, and you can download them and play with them and, and what have you, but we're really looking for service provider carrier grade solutions at this time, and um, we have work to do. <clears throat> so event correlation, the opportunity. <clears throat> of course, uh, closed loop monitoring as opposed to open loop monitoring where the event is just created into a ticket and an actual human has to do something about it. That's great. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys ever worked in a knock, but there's instances where things just go all cattywampus, alarm scrolling, everything's turning red. It would be great if you could suppress some of those alarms, reduce the duplicates and things like that. And a good correlation engine is going to uh, help us with those capabilities. <clears throat> and if an, aggreg if an aggregation router goes down as opposed to a an edge router, the ripple effect in the network um, is, uh, and, the, the, and the footprint of that effect is, is very different. And if you have a correlation engine, um, it can help us with that, of course. And of course, the, the big picture is um, the correlation um, increases our knowledge about the network and, of course, um, helps us with our strategic directory of the decisions we make and implement or don't implement in the network. And, of course, we're all in for business. So the bottom line, if we save a penny, we earn a penny. <clears throat> if you're not interested in, <laughs> in reducing OPEX, I'm sure your boss is, so we all have to be cognizant of that. <clears throat> and correlation helps us reduce the incident, potentially reduce the incident time, and um, it just enables our human resources to work 
smarter and not harder. So that's the opportunity. So what do we have in the future? Um, ODAP is working on, within their architecture framework, of course, there's the data collector analytics event engine. It's kind of harkened back to, I don't want to say the old days, but um, it collects information and kind of creates, um, modifies the events into a standard-based model and then makes those available for all your analytics and all of your, um, all of your, um, your database lakes and whatnot so you can share that information. And open, open, OPNFV, not OpenNFV, is um, working on a, a standard data model, um, which is a client-server kind of agent thing. But if you get an alarm from a Juniper VNF, it's going to look and feel similar to a Cisco VNF with the, uh, with the, with the VEST data model that they're, that they're working on. There's a few open source tools. Uh, Vitraj is a correlation engine. It is a, an open stack project. Manaska is an open stack project. And Zabbix is an open source, but it's not a open stack project. But those are, um, those are great, um, I guess, germs, if you will. And they will eventually, hopefully, um, meet most of, our, most of our needs in a in a service provider environment. And there's also talk about um, some, some vendors are doing assistant, assisted, I'm sorry, uh, machine learning. And that's great, and those capabilities will only increase. But if we can take an AI solution or machine uh, learning solution and implement into our, into our challenges of uh, life cycle management, we'll take it, we'll do it. Um, it's going to be all, all better for the, uh, for the community. But the bottom line is there's a need for a comprehensive framework, whether that comes out of ONAP or op OpenNFV, and how do they reconcile each other, or do they? Um, it's all part of our life cycle management. And Mike's going to talk about some of these challenges in detail, some of these challenges actually we've seen in the field. Yeah, okay. So when, in life cycle management in this environment, it's kind of funny because Everybody wants to get in on it, right? So you have automation is a great thing, <clears throat> but everybody wants to do it then. So we have a Vim that if heat is used to spin up a, a VM, it will do lifecycle management on that VM. You have an SDN controller, which if a service instance is bought up inside the SDN controller, it will do lifecycle management. You have a VNFM that thinks it owns the, all the VNFs, Okay, and then you have an NFEO that owns the service. And all of these things will do lifecycle management. And then you have a cross-domain orchestrator that can get into the picture and it can bypass those things and potentially do lifecycle management as well. Okay, um, so one, one of the things is, is, you know, this results in a lot of confusion and overlap in functionality. And you saw the Etsy model in the, in the first part of the presentation. But if you have all these things and they're not playing in their, in their little box, you have issues. And we've seen some of those issues. Um, and there's no correlation in the cloud generally in any of these systems. They just say, oh, that's mine. It's broke. I'm going to fix it. Um, so I'm going to run through some examples. But one of the things I'll say actually before I run through an example uh, of a trouble in the environment is one of the cases where this became really apparent early on is when we were doing some, some stuff and a vendor told us, well, in order for us to show you healing, you can't take the VM down, you have to suspend it. Because if you take the VM down, the, 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 un, the layers underneath, like the VIM with heat and all, they're going to fix it. And so we can't even demo what we want to show you in the way of healing because it'll be healed by something else. Okay, so our first trouble scenario that we're going to run through, right? The VNF goes down, okay? That information goes to OpenStack. That information goes to the SDN controller. That information goes to the VNFM. That information goes to the NFVO. It goes to the cross-domain orchestrator. So they all know this thing has happened. They all know the VM is down. But who fixes it? And the answer is, from what we've seen, they all might try to fix it. 
And we've seen scenarios where Heat will actually try and fix it at the same time the NFVO thinks the service is down, so it tries to fix it. And this gets into a, a, a very bad state because Heat tries to spin up another VM at the same time the NFVO is trying to delete the stack. It can't delete the stack because there are ports occupied, so it can't even delete the network that makes up the stack. And so the NFVO eventually gets out of sync. Now, the service could have been impacted, right? The service could have been up. Well, actually, the service wouldn't have been in this case because the VM is down. Okay, but you have a customer now that is not up. Okay, if he got the, the VM up, then it might be up, but it may not be configured properly. So you don't even know what state you're in. And if you were able to recover and get into a good state, for somehow the VNFM, the, the VNFM and the NFVO think it's down. So if something happens again, they won't even try to heal it because they're not in a good state. So our next scenario that we wanted to cover was what about management networks? A lot of these things today are being managed over management networks, all right? And they're being determined whether they're up or not over the management network. Well, if the management network goes down, your VNFM and your NFVO and your cross-domain orchestrator may all detect that this device is down. But once again, they're not correlating, right? So they don't know that it's because the management network is down and they can't get to the device because of that. So they're gonna try and heal it. Well, in this scenario, the customer wasn't even down. The customer was up and running happily because their traffic doesn't flow over the management network, right? And now when the, the VNFM or the NFVO takes that down, they've basically caused an outage. So they're trying to help, but you have this scenario. And then in our third scenario, we talked about something that's completely out of the domain of, the, of OpenStack. Right, so something in a, in a core network or, or a managed ac access network goes down. Well, if you're monitoring for traffic flow, once again, you think your service is down. And because they don't look outside of their domain, they think it's something inside their domain. So they may try and heal that, that VNF when the VNF is up and fine. Okay, now you'd say the service is down, that's right, but when the network orchestrators fix that service, maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, customer could be up and running. But in this environment with VN VNFs running on VMs, a lot of the times these VNFs takes f take five minutes just to boot and get their interfaces back up. So instead of it being a 30 second outage, it's potentially a five minute outage. Okay? And, and we've seen these scenarios occur. All right, so the question then becomes, what do you do? Okay, one possible solution, and it doesn't have to be the solution, you can do it without a cross-domain orchestrator, but if the cross-domain orchestrators function the way they should, right, they will work across the domains. They will have the view of the end-to-end -end service. Okay, um, but they can't be the ones that fix the problems. They just need to direct the domain orchestrators to fix the problems, okay? And in order to do that right, they're gonna have to be tightly integrated with all these domain orchestrators, and they're gonna have to be tightly integrated with correlation, and the domain orchestrators have to allow the cross-domain orchestrator to tell it what to do instead of just acting on its own. Okay, lifecycle management, uh, as far as existing and, and working with correlation, right? Some of the things that we've learned, right? Um, we've learned from collection standpoint, right? That we don't always get all the information. So that's one thing that has to happen. We know from, from experience that operators are used to using the tools that operators like to use. Okay, so you can't just say, oh, we, we've got this nice new GUI that does monitoring in the cloud. Operations isn't gonna want a swivel chair to 50 different GUIs in order to determine the information they want. You have to integrate the monitoring to other monitoring systems so that you can provide one view to your, to your NOC. Okay, you have, um, I've already talked a lot about tight integration, okay? You can't send an alert with an ID in it. An alert with an ID means nothing to the other systems. And if they then have to query multiple times per alert, 
when you put it into a network where there could be thousands and hundreds of thousands of alerts in a short period of time, that's not scalable. Okay, so the alerts that come out of OpenStack, out of the NFVO, out of the environment as a whole, have to be contain the information that's needed for successful integration. Okay, correlation engine has to be involved to be able to determine what does this mean, who is impacted, how does it get fixed, okay, and it has to tie into a cross-domain orchestrator or integrate into all the orchestrators itself to make sure that the right actions are taken. Um, so, and then correlation could be done in the old world, it could be done in a new world, but anytime you introduce new systems, okay, you have to figure out how to phase them in to replace the existing ones. You can't just introduce, and I already covered this a little bit with the GUIs, you can't introduce 50 things to replace one. You have to consolidate so that NOCs and people who work with systems have single points of view. And then the big thing is, Stay in your swim lane, but understand there's a pool, okay? An NFVO has a specific function, but it shouldn't be focused that the only thing that exists in the world is its lane. It has to know there are other things that are in that pool with it and work with those systems. Okay, um, we can open up, up for questions now. There are two mics. If you have a question, please go over to one of the mics. No questions? Then everything was crystal clear. Appreciate you guys for coming and hope this is of value.